Welcome to Speak the Truth in Love with Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia, where we do speak the truth in love based on Ephesians 4.15. In today's woke PC culture, there are many forces that want to stop free speech, especially for people of faith. Good men and women must be willing to stand up for their faith and be the salt and light to preserve our freedom. True freedom comes from faith in Jesus Christ. In John 8.32, God's Word says, The truth is will set you free. Today I'd like to welcome you friends and I'm just going to kind of go solo today because I've got some things that I really want to say. And I've just recently come back from another trip to Atlanta. Many of y'all get that opportunity to go to Atlanta and see family and friends and I'm blessed to still have a mom up in Atlanta. And it's always interesting when I go talk to her because she has come from a more, if you will, moderate background in politics and things. But she always gives me great balance and truth. And I always love talking to her. She, Like I say, she's 89, almost 90. October 12th, she'll be 90 years old. And I'm amazed at how much she knows what's going on, her and her husband both. Uh, they both tend to vote Republican nowadays because of where our country is going. And I just think about the reality, folks, of where we are, where our country is trying to define different things of life and uh, what different sexes are and uh, the different uh, LBTQ and all those other things that are going on. And I just got to tell you, folks, I think the most important thing we can do is tell people the truth because the truth really will set people free. And I just think about what's going on again when I think about God's Word. And God's Word reminds us and warns us from the very beginning, from Genesis of, of uh, to be listen to God and to obey what he tells us to do. And if we do, we're going to have a long life. And back then, they could have probably lived forever if they'd obeyed God, Adam and Eve. And I'm amazed at the number of people that do not want to build or uh, believe biblical stories. They want to say that the flood never happened. And for ex- that's just one many, of many examples. And I, I think all of us, we, we grew up in schools, especially if we went to public school, and where they try to convince us that evolution is a fact, which is being disproven every day, and that creation is just not possible in God's word the way he says it. And when I think about that, I'm just amazed, again, how many people do not believe the Bible, and they want to believe that they came from an amoeba or whatever. It just blows my mind that they can have uh, that much faith that something came from nothing. And the only thing I can say is that God's always been He always will be, and he's got complete control of what's going on. And I just want to encourage you, everybody out there, to really read what the Bible says. It's never been proven wrong scientifically. It's never been proven wrong historically. But so many people want to say, well, there's inconsistency. There's there's opposites. Sometimes it's opposite scripture almost that will uh, detract people from what the Word of God says, what the truth of the Word says. And again, I go back that the Bible is inspired, it's 100% accurate, and I can understand why some translations or whatever people might object to or uh, have discussions on. But when you go back to the original Greek, original Hebrew, you're going to see that the Bible is totally consistent and that God made everything. He made the boundaries of the sea. And we got people debating today whether Uh, global climate change is man-controlled, and I know we need to have clean water. We need to have clean air. We'll we'll agree on that. But to say that the earth has never uh, had water over it or had ice that would uh, cause the seas to recede is uh, just foolish. And yet we can see right here in Georgia where the reality of that happened. We know that the the so-called fall line, that's where the ocean went to. And even in the past, they've said they found brine shrimp on Stone Mountain, Georgia. And again, how did they get there? I don't know whether that's from uh, prehistoric days or whether there, somebody dropped some shrimp up there to make a hoax. I don't know what happened there. But the reality of what is what I'm saying is at one point, all of Florida was underwater. All of South Georgia was underwater. A lot of the East Coast, a lot of islands that are in the Pacific Ocean or wherever were underwater. So God is in complete control. Man does not control that. And yet they're going to tell us every day you listen to NPR, every day you listen to NBC, every uh, mainstream media, they're they're always telling you every day this lie 
that man has the ultimate authority in weather and the weather. And I just don't believe that. Uh, there may be aspe- aspects of the weather that man can control. Maybe they can see a few clouds or something like that. But other than that, there's nothing they can really do to control it. And so I'm just thinking about Romans 24, which prepares us as Christians, people that have faith in Christ, and, of course, believe God's word. Uh, in Psalm, in uh, Matthew 24, he talks about the signs of the end of the age. And, it's, and this is Jesus. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, which is just right across from the old city, right outside the walls, he's looking back toward the city of Jerusalem. And he sat, as he sat there on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately sa- saying, tell us when these things will happen and what will be and what will be the sign of your coming or at the end or at the end, end of the age. And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not ashamed or alarmed. For this must, not, must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And all of these are the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. And folks, you just look at that. What is that Bible scripture saying? What did Jesus Christ say? He knows everything. He knows the end times. He told us what's going to happen. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. If we look around the world, how many uh, African countries are being taken over by a dictator that maybe is more friendly toward Russia? We look at Russia and Ukraine. We look at China threatening uh, Taiwan. We look at our own battles that we fought. We, we abandoned Afghanistan and gave up that battle that we fought for 20 years. We set a lot of those people free. And then we turned around and gave it right back to the guys we took it from. I mean, how foolish can we be? How foolish can man be? How foolish can our leaders be to give up a country that our men and women gave up their blood, sweat, and tears, their very lives, their body parts, to give it back to the very evil people that you ran out in the first place? And then all the freedoms that those people were enjoying, thank you, Joe Biden and his team, his weak team, for allowing this to happen. And it's just terrible. I mean, think about you have a business one day, you're a lady, you have a hair salon or whatever your business is, and the next day you literally you have some thought police come in and tell you you can no longer do it. And folks, don't think that can't happen right here in America. Anywhere we look around, there are places that have had freedoms and they've lost them, and there are places that we know for a fact It's going to happen here if we don't wake up. So I just want to encourage you, look at what the Word of God says. It's saying there's going to be a great falling away. And what does that mean? Well, that means there are going to be a lot of people that so-called are Christians that are going to fall away, and they're going to back away from their faith. And when you look at what's happening in our churches, in our Christian schools, our Christian universities, a lot of them, even Harvard and Yale, they started out as Christian schools. Even where I went, Florida State started out as a a, uh, seminary. And you look at where they are today, their founders would just be rocking in their grave. They cannot believe how far we've gone. And when you think about how far we've gone just the last 20 years, even when Barack Obama was elected president and how bad things got in just those eight years under his leadership. And thank God we had a reprieve under Donald Trump for four years. And can you imagine if Hillary had won, what would be happening to our country? We would never see a conservative law passed again because the Supreme Court would shoot it down. And yet we're blessed that that Donald Trump and even the U.S. senators were willing to stand up and put fairly conservative justices on the court. And we just pray that they'll have a long life. They'll live a long, long life. 
because we need them to stay in there and bring some balance to our country. So I just want you to think about it. You think about these wars and rumors of wars. You think about false prophets and all the things that are going on with false prophets. I mean, how many times a day do you hear news about Hunter Biden or uh, others in the Biden administration and things they're doing, and you wonder what is a false flag, what's going to get us going in a certain direction before we realize really what they're doing is trying to get us to chase a rabbit when they're really trying to undermine us in another place. And I just think about that reality that is going on every day in our country and then the impact on the world. And think about it, the rainbow, which was sent by God to tell us that he would never destroy the earth again with a flood. And yet, very evil people with very, very evil intent have taken over that symbol that God meant to bless us with and are really literally turning it against that blessing. And so, folks, just be aware that we have got to stand up for what the truth is. And I think the most important truth we can tell people is the truth about lifestyles, about what they're doing. And so I just want to encourage you to let's stand up, let's fight, let's get out there and make a difference and tell the truth in love. We're going to take a quick break. This is Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Speak the Truth in Love. Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia, here today talking about different issues facing our country. I just talked about uh, Matthew 24, and now I'm going to go to Romans 1. And the fact of of what God does, there's like a wrath that he's going to send on us if we're living unrighteously. And uh, Romans 1, verses 18 and on. For the wrath of God reveals from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their own unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have already been clearly clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that he has been have been made. So they are with, without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened, claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in their lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than his creator, who has blessed them forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty and the error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, gave them up. God gave them up to a debased mind, and what ought not to be done, they were filled with all manner of unrighteous, evil, covetous, ma- uh, malice. They were full of e- envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish and faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they do not only do that for them, but gave an approval to those who practice them. And folks, I just got to tell you, you know, we can deny the word of God. People can say that it doesn't have uh, relevance to their lives today. But nothing is new under the sun. And I just think about what people are doing, what people are trying to tell us is okay. Different lifestyles, different ways of living. And we know in our heart it's not right. And so, folks, I just want to encourage you and warn you because God's word has said it's going to happen. He predicted it in in, uh, Matthew 24, and here we're reading it in Romans 1. And there are a lot of people who go, well, Jesus didn't say that. 
Paul wrote that, so I don't really agree with Paul. Well, it's inspired word. It's the inspired word of God. So if Paul wrote it, it's because God gave it to him. And that kind of language, that kind of writing, is really not possible for a man to do. And so I just really do want to encourage you, if you've got anybody out there that is facing a lifestyle that is going to be destructive to them, they need to know the truth. The truth will set them free. As a matter of fact, I've had a family member, and they'll debate me. It's amazing when I will say to them, the truth will set you free. And they'll look at you in that anger and that hurt in a lot of cases because they're, they're carrying some guilt and they're carrying pain. And they'll look at you like, why do people always say that to me? And it's because there are people in that person's life that love them, that care for them, and they want to speak the truth in love. And that's what we got to be about. We cannot sit back and just accept what we call an alternative lifestyle and other things without consequences and how people are being groomed to come into those positions. And even our leaders are involved with that. And we know the recent movie Sound of Freedom has really opened the eyes to a lot of people. In our own state, our governor's wife has been a leader in stopping uh, child trafficking. And Atlanta is well known for it. It's a transportation hub, always has been, and continues to be. And so if we don't stand up and fight it, who will? And so I just want to encourage you again. These are encouraging words. They're not meant to hold us back or restrain us. They're meant to really set people free. And again, when I go, when I go and I talk to people and I see them and I just go, you see these parades and you see uh, very uh, rude things being done, people walking down the street without clothes on, things like that, and they, the people don't even get arrested. And yet if somebody else did it, they would get arrested. And they should be because it's indecent exposure. It should be stopped. And if we as good men and women do not get up and get involved, that kind of thing is going to continue to happen. So I just want to encourage you, get your friends, get involved in politics, get involved with City Hall, get involved at your state government, your United States government. Let your congressman, your senator know what you think about these things. Because a lot of times we just go, well, they're a Democrat. We can't call them. It won't make a difference. Georgia has two U.S. senators that are Democrats. But our phone calls matter because they're surely getting the calls from the other side. And if we're not calling Reverend Warnock, who claims to be a follower of Christ, uh, we're, we're, we've got to help change that man's heart. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God will change his heart and he'll stick to what the Bible says, not what man interprets the Bible to say. Because the word of God is true, and again, it will set people free. And we need to love people enough to be willing to tell, tell them the truth. We're going to ne- take another quick, quick break. This is Clint Day from St. Simon's Isle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Speak the Truth and Love. Clint Day from St. Simon's Island, Georgia. And another issue that I just want to kind of go in on is this so-called UFO hoax. And, folks, that is, I believe, truly, and I've heard it in other places, I truly believe that they are truly trying to set us up for when the rapture happens in our world. And if you don't know what the rapture is, the great taking away, at some point in our history, in the future, God will take the Christians out of this world. And I really do believe, I'm a pre-trib person, I really do believe that it's going to be done before the great tribulation. And there's a lot of scripture that will back that up. But I don't want to get caught up in that, that philosophy or that theology, if you will. I want to just accept the reality that God will be taking us out. And when that happens, how is the world going to explain it? When all the Christians disappear from this earth, how will the world explain it? And there's all sorts of scripture when it talks about the spiritual battle. I really do believe if there is such a thing as UFO, if there is such a thing as a little green man or a big green man or whatever that these people claim they have seen, I truly do believe nine times out of ten, those people are not necessarily Christ followers, and they do not necessarily have a faith view. And so they're open, they've opened themselves to the demonic spirits that might be floating around out there, and they may be in their yard or whatever and manifesting themselves as being real. And I just want to make sure that you understand 
if you ever have any experience where you're feeling any kind of demonic attack or whatever, that you can refute that in the name of Jesus out loud, just like Jesus did when he was tempted and uh, Jesus was, you know, using scripture to defend his position and, you know, just rebuking Satan from attacking him. We can do the same thing. And you got to remember, Satan does not read minds. He cannot read your mind. He can put thoughts there, but you can rebuke him with the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the, the risen Christ. And I just want to encourage you to do that because a lot of times we get fearful in places of people with a different position when you go to work, when you go to a school, and you get peer pressure that tries to push you to things that you know are wrong, you let that truth speak the truth and defend you. And again, even if people go against you, many, nine times out of ten, again, if the majority is against you, you're probably on the right side in a lot of cases, especially in today's world with where we're taking things. And I just want to encourage you again, get back to the Word of God. What does it say? What's the truth that will set you free? And it will be consistent. God will never ask you to do something that's inconsistent with his word. I'm amazed at the number of couples, for example, that I'll men meet, and they're going through a divorce. And one of the pe members of the, of, the, of the couples will say, I'm just not happy and I want to leave. And you go, wait a minute, you're a Christian, right? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church. And I believe in Christ. Well, that is inconsistent with the word of God to leave your spouse. The only biblical grounds is adultery, okay? And even then, that doesn't mean the marriage has to be over. It could be worked through. And people need to be willing to get help if they have that situation. But going back to what I'm saying about the Word of God, if it says it in the Word of God, you do not want to violate it. Anytime I've ever violated the Word of God, I know I paid for it. And I know a prime example of that for me is in business. When I do, did a lot of real estate loans, and when everything was good, it was great. But it's just like the Word of God says. There'll come a time where the borrower will become slave to the lender. And that truth, again, I knew it. I believed it. Thought I had three years of cash reserves and I'd work through these things. But no one expected necessarily the great recession that we had in 2005, 2007, 2008 period. And so a lot of things changed. And I know in my own family, my dad had started motels in 1970. And in 1973, just a few months after we legalized abortion in America, the so-called Roe versus Wade decision and the Doe versus Bolton decision, which in Georgia was a case fought that made it legal throughout the nine months. We hadn't talked about that much since the, re the reversal of Do uh, Roe versus Wade uh, with the Dobbs case, but that case made it legal throughout the entire nine months of, of a pregnancy, if you recall that. But when I go back to that reality, think about that, in that year, we legalized abortion. Six months later or so, well, seven or eight months later, the Arabs did an oil embargo. And at that time, our family was in the motel business, and no one was traveling, okay? So my dad got a good taste of what it meant to become the slave to the lender and all the work it took to get through that. Fortunately, that was a shorter recession. The oil did start pumping. People started traveling again, and things turned around for my dad just in time. And sometimes, though, that debt to, to the borrower, our debt to the lender, I mean, and that, that can be so destructive. And so I just that's a, another example of what is so important. Another incredible proverb to me is Proverbs 22.1, which says a good name is better than great riches. And so many people want to get out and make the buck. They want to make more money. They want to be away from their family. I've been guilty of that myself, and they forget about what's going on at home. And I just want to encourage you, if you're out there and you want to chase that dollar, I just want to encourage you, think about the ramifications, how fast your children grow up. And I just want to encourage you to be involved with your family. Don't chase the mighty dollar. The mighty dollar will vaporize and it will be gone. But your children and your family will be with you hopefully in eternity because the investment you made in them to lead them to Jesus Christ, which is the most important decision we can ever make. So this is Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia, with Speak the Truth in Love at 1100 AM. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Speak Truth and Love with Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia. And I'm just wanting to go through different issues that have been really after me and after my heart. I mean, I, as I drive around and I have been spending a lot of time in Atlanta and I get a lot of chance to listen to uh, local news and national news, I'm amazed, again, folks, at God's justice. And I, I sometimes you look around and you just go, wow, God, why are you letting these certain things happen? Uh, you've got Hunter Biden out there doing what he does, and, and he doesn't even seem to face any punishment. Thankfully, recently, the court, the judge up in the Delaware area, went against him and said, hey, wait a minute, I don't like this deal because basically this deal is clearing you of other crimes that you may or may not have committed. And, and that's one of those things that you just go, how can a man walk into court and having done what he did and not have to pay for it? And the only thing he's going to pay is a, a simple fine. And that's just not fair. And then we got Donald Trump having to go through what he goes through, where they bring 37 cases and one South Florida judge, and, and now they want to add more to it because of his uh, documents at Mar-a-Lago. But I don't know about you. I don't even know, begin to know the files I have today, but I cannot imagine being the president of the United States, the former president, and having hundreds and hundreds of files. How would you really know what's in that? And it's been amazing. Every time they've attacked Donald Trump, he's come out innocent, he's come out stronger, and he's been come out more willing to fight. And I just hope and pray that's the same thing that happens this time, that he will have that resolve to stand in there and stand firm. Think about it, folks. If you were at your home, and you let's just imagine you had the resources, the financial resources, to, to duke something like that out. You get the government against you, I cannot imagine. They can bankrupt anybody, and they can just keep it coming. And they have weaponized the courts, the, judge, the judges, the DOJ, apparently. There's a lot of inju- injustice there. But I truly do believe that God is judge. He will take care of it. He will bring about justice. And those that have not accepted Jesus Christ truly will find that God judgment that uh, I don't wish on anybody. I really don't. I pray that they would repent and turn to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and their lives would be changed. And anybody out there, the same for you. No matter what you've done, God is willing to forgive you if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He will forgive you. He'll wipe the slate clean. He'll start over. Not that he'll take all the consequences of bad decision away, but he will absolutely carry you through them. And we've all been there and done that. We've all had our things that we wish we had not done. And again, I am looking for God's justice. And I look around the room and I see the different things that have happened to Trump's people. I think about uh, the generals and, and other leaders, Giuliani and others that have been around him. And they've done the best they can with the information they had. And yet every several of them are facing consequences of, of judges and a justice department that is being weaponized against them. And we have really got to pray against that because like Donald Trump said, he came to the Georgia Republican Convention a few months ago, and I guarantee you, he goes, look, I'm fighting this fight for you because they're coming for you too. Don't think you can get away with their in, injustice acts without – having those consequences. So we need to stand up and help and pray for Donald Trump and other leaders in our country, especially on the conservative side. And, Lord, I'm just praying, too, that God will raise up some conservative news network, some investor that's willing to buy maybe ABC or even Fox and turn it back into a conservative network. And it's very, very possible. Again, nothing is impossible for God. He can do it. He can take care of anything. He can take whatever whatever needs you have, he can help you with it. And I truly do believe we got to face reality. Just like my dad used to say, we're all motel guests on this earth. We're here today and gone tomorrow. And the decisions you make today will affect you forever. What kind of decisions are you making? Who are you following? Where are you leading people to go? Are you a positive influence in their life? Are you leading them in the right direction? And I just heard a friend of mine share today on a text thread. He's a prayer warrior, a friend from Fletzy. 
and he was talking about how his own in-laws, one of them, the mother's more of a, a Hindu, and the dad's just basically agnostic, doesn't believe in God, or doesn't believe anything. And you think about the eternal aspect of that. The daughter is a Christian. The husband and wife, my friends, are, are Christians, but her parents are not. Just think about the burden that you carry to know that somebody you love will not be in eternity if they don't need Jesus Christ with you in heaven. They'll be in the eternal fire of God's justice, his judgment. And people say, well, wait a minute. Why would God, a loving God, allow that to happen? He doesn't allow it to happen. He gives people a choice. We don't have to be robots. Everybody wants a robot to help clean their house and do jobs around the house. God does not want robots. He wants a, a human being, a person with a soul and a spirit to love him and have a relationship with him. And the only way you really have that relationship is faith in Jesus Christ. So that's what I want to encourage in. God is a God of justice. We reap what we sow. We reap more than we sow. And we reap later than we sow. In every aspect, we reap what we sow, more than we sow, and later than we sow. So if you're sowing, sowing good seeds, you're going to get good rewards. If you're sowing bad seeds, you're going to face consequences. So this is Clint Day from Speak the Truth and Love, 1100 a.m. in St. Simons Island, Georgia. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Very good. Well, I just want to encourage you again uh, as we talk about these different issues to stand up and really a key part of the faith walk is putting on that full armor. We need to put on the full armor like Ephesians 6 talks about. And when I think about America, and I've shared this many times before, and I'm going to continue to share it because it's so powerful. I, it's when Alexander Tyler came over here, and he was a great French writer apparently, and he wrote a lot of great things about America. But he also wrote about the reality of a democracy. And I know I've, he I've read this with you before. I want to remind everybody out there of this famous quote. A democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largesse from the public treasury. Largesse is money, basically, in, in goods, if you will. But anyway, from the, they can take that money from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury. With the result, the democracy always collapses over loose fiscal policy, always followed by dictatorship. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations has been 200 years. These nations have progressed through this sequence. And as I read these sequences, tell me where we are. These nations have progressed through these, this sequence. From bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to apathy, from apathy to dependence, from dependence back into bondage. Now, folks, where are we? From apathy to dependence? Do you care? Do people care? Are people willing to get out there and fight for their rights? The First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Hey, listen, they want us to be tolerant. The left wants us to be tolerant until we disagree with them. They'll be tolerant as long as we agree with them. As soon as we disagree with them, they're not tolerant anymore. They want to stop you from free speech. And if you don't believe me, look around the room, look around the buildings, Look around the places you go to work in. And the consequences are finally starting to happen. It's very scary when places like Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch, which I'm not a beer drinker, wouldn't recommend it, would recommend you stay away from it. But for those that do responsibly drink, there are hundreds of people in the corporate office, like a third of their value has been dropped because of a stupid marketing person decision to put a, a guy that wants to say he's a girl on a Bud Light can and their consequences. And the same with the LA Times. I'm so happy to hear they're losing 700 employees, supposedly, in the LA Times. And folks, when are, when are they going to wake up? 
I mean, look at San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, the hotel owners that are walking away from the properties and giving the keys to the banks, to the small businesses that are being ruined in downtown San Francisco because of the left liberal policies, the drug infestation, the people that will use the restroom on the sidewalks of the city. If I'm walking down the city at a hotel in San Francisco with my family, and all of a sudden I see that, do you think I want to come back to that place? Of course not. And no, even liberals don't like that. And yet that's the policy. That's the type of policy they agree with. They'll put a person in jail for a crime and then require no bail, and they just get out like they never, nothing ever happened and then they're not properly prosecuted. And folks, how can a country sustain that? How can a city sustain that? How, what is it going to take to get particularly minorities, and we as Republicans need to reach out to minorities and ask for their vote? They agree with us in a lot of family and social issues, especially the Hispanic and, and faithful, faith-filled uh, blacks, African Americans. They have a worldview that is very similar to ours, but we got to get out and ask them for their vote. Sometimes we just assume they're not, but we got to get out and ask them for their vote because they don't agree with what's going on in this country. Most of the crime really hurts those lower income areas, and we got to do more to protect them. And I just think about kind of shifting on you. I was uh, at a on a phone call earlier tonight with a, a friend of a friend, a family member. This person was in South Carolina, and they were calling, look, turn up the prayer warriors. A good friend of ours, her name is Veronica, has just found out she has, she's been in a rehab for breaking a hip, and so you have to get, go through re, rehabilitation to get help with that so you can walk again and do all that type of thing. We all know people have been through that. But now she's got COVID. I mean, she's in a medical facility, and she gets COVID, of all things. And now she's got to go to the hospital. So I just encourage you, pray for people that are facing those sudden changes, and especially even COVID. And you know and I know, folks, that a lot of the reason these things are happening, it's about control. And I also believe they do not, when I say they, the, 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 the state that is so-called running this country, the deep state, the so-called swamp, they really want to get rid of older voters because they tend to be more conservative. Their life lessons have taught them that you need to be conservative. You need to take care of your what you have. You need to conserve what you have. You don't need to just give it to everybody else, especially if they're not willing to work and be productive citizens. Now, some people can't. they got handicaps or whatever. I understand there needs to be some kind of safety net for those people. But a lot of people, you'll see them uh, stopping at a lot at a You'll stop at a light in Atlanta, and a guy will be walking down the middle of the road trying to get money. And i I got to admit to you, I look at him and I go, you look like you can work a job. If you can walk up and down this place for five hours or four hours when the light changes, you ought to be able to get a job. And so, folks, again, I want to have a heart. I want to have passion. I want to help people. But at the same time, what are we doing? So to wrap it up, Truth will set you free. The truth will always set you free. And I want to encourage you to stand up and speak the truth. Truth. Because, again, we need to change our country. We need to win our country back. And I want to encourage you to get out there and get involved to make a difference. If you want to, don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your children, your grandchildren, to every generation until Christ returns. Mm-hmm. And, again, I want to just thank you, friends, for joining me today on Speak the Truth in Love with Clint Day on WCJA 1100 AM from St. Simons Island, Georgia. Remember, a good day is a God day.